sure your question is in front of you and you asking the same question what exactly you have sent it to us ashish will moderate the session ashish just uh, say hello to everyone so people know hi good afternoon everyone hi good afternoon hi moderator for today please bear and, uh, with me for next 30 minutes so we we really want to uh, go that way that we can finish his introduction and he wants to say what exactly he's been gone through about his life what he become and how is he right now and then we will go for the uh, question side and this will be live so if you are on asix page facebook please go on asix and make sure you share that so people from your circle also get to know what is all about mental health and what we are planning and reet uh, i think uh, this is the time you can start scre uh, streaming live and i will uh, call julian so he can come and guys reet is the main guy who looking sure. after everything i am just a face he is the backbone so say thank you and uh, whatever you want to say the credit goes to reet ah thanks okay so ran how are you brother <clears throat> good buddy how are you good to see you good to see you brother so i i, I think everyone heard that if you haven't uh, joined asix page go write asix on your facebook you will see our page like and share it so that video can be uh, seen by many people in your uh, uh, circle as well and i think when it will be live uh, reet will already let us know yep so we are just going live in 2 minutes i guess uh, abhi is okay he he is not here with us right now who is joining abhi that guy from germany don't worry uh, make, make make sure we only have two more minutes or three more minutes so we yeah. everything will be ready as i told you he have already half an hour i will get him early if we can so we have most of his time I'm just sending him an email we go to land to put that block on and for some reason that land is filed to put the block on there that we're going to be passed please and i think we're going to find it when i don't think it's all going to get here in one of the so i i agree that if I I have got someone called F A A L I A. Can you please pronounce your name uh, so that I can pronounce it correctly? While uh, it's it's Falia, correct? That's correct. Falia. Okay. So we have got. I'll just pronounce the name. Uh, Ruben, Zorin, Andrew, Cindy. So it's Zoran. Zoran. Okay, Zoran. Cool. Cindy, uh, Sunidi, yep. Abhishek, and Falia. Correct. thank you so much guys so guys uh, we are live on facebook so if uh, anyone have logged in already on facebook can you please share it so we will actually have more audience on their page and i will just i already email to so he will be with us in a couple of minutes i hope everyone are doing great it's a live video so you still have time to tell us introduce yourself a little bit i'll start with ruben ruben how is everything going is your and in melbourne you unmute please there we go yeah going good? yeah going well um uh today's actually my birthday so i've oh, had happy birthday thank happy you birthday. happy birthday happy birthday for you bro happy birthday <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to share my birthday with you all. So thank you very much. See how technology makes people uh, together. I have shared it on Facebook. All right. So, and 
this is uh, sorry, I just can't see your name, Cindy. So Cindy. can you can you just introduce yourself? Just one uh, minute. Oh, just one minute. Um, hi, my name is Cindy. I'm of fellow Filipino background, and I've been living in Australia for like twelve years now. So it's so good to see everyone here and. Yeah, all the virtually, hopefully after everything's finished, we can, That's um, it. what is that? Someone playing music, uh, happy birthday music for uh, <laughs> maybe Romain. <laughs> I think we, we should do it later. Let's uh, <laughs> have, like, have another uh, four minutes yeah. But yeah. so we can introduce ourselves. So yes, yeah. sorry, That's Cindy. That's all right. All good. All right. All right. So next is Andrew. Andrew, how are you, brother? Unmute, please. Testing. Does it work? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, better. Ah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, my name is Andrew. I'm uh, an engineer, uh, but I also do a bit of uh, work with an international organization, uh, HWCL, uh, to do with peace. And we also do stuff with the International Peace Youth Group. So, lots of international youth and, yeah, just trying to make things a bit better in the world. Yeah, that's about it. That's better. So uh, next, uh, Navneet from Melbourne. Hello, uh, my name is Navneet. I live in Melbourne. I'm from India and I've been here for about one year. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, Fa, Fa Lilia. Fa Alia, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So my name is Fa Lilia. Uh, I'm from Sydney. Uh, I come from a Samoan background. Uh, I'm also a student uh, doing marine biology and I am also part of a, a, a youth organization and also international organization that does uh, peace work. So yeah, lovely to meet you guys. Okay, so who? Uh, Zoran is the man. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Zoran. Um, I've, I've been in Australia for the last year and a half now. I'm from uh, India, but you know, kind of grew up in the Middle East. And yeah, I do a bunch of things from motivational speaking to acting to presenting. And I'm also doing my master's at UTS. And uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, Suniti? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm from India and I live in Sydney. And I'm doing my Bachelor of Psychology from Bachelor of, uh, from Macquarie University. Okay, the man uh, who's running the show uh, is uh, Reet Pal. Ritpal, unmute please. Hi guys, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so my name is Reet. So I'm working with ASX for the last two plus years. Also, I'm working as a full-time job as a software engineer. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been doing a lot of context switching in between how things have been happening. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, I didn't realize Julian is listening to us. Julian, welcome to the show. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so Julian, we can't hear you. You have to unmute, please. No, no audio. Can you hear me now? Yes, better, better. Sorry, Julian, better? we just totally missed oh, you okay. are watching everyone and listening. No, I, uh, as, as long as you can hear me, I might just change phones. I think I've got them, I think I've got them in the wrong ears. That might be better. No, it's better. We can hear it's you. It's better. That's better. Great. Yeah. All right. So I think we should start now. And uh, uh, just say, uh, Julian, first of all, thank you so much. And uh, the moderator is Ashish. And I will just introduce, he will introduce to yourself. And he's running the show behind. He's a student representative for Australian Indian Sports Education Culture Society, Essex. And we are all here and welcoming you, Ashish, to start shoot. Well, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ashish Gautam and I'm going to be the moderator for today. One in 16 Australians is currently experiencing depression every day. 6.2 of Australians aged between 16 to 85 have experienced an effective disorder in the last 12 months. Let me share another world statistics before I introduce our guest this afternoon. At a global level, over 300 million people are estimated to suffer from depression, equivalent to 4.4 of the world's population. Australia 
is estimated to be at 135th number out of 192, which is notably appreciable. But there is a lot to do more in the coming days and years to come. Well, we are here in conversation with someone who is going to tell us why that needs to be changed. Somebody who does not need an introduction. We know him through our politics. But he's somebody I admire for a different reason, in, in addition to his impactful work and talent. He decided to go public with his deeply personal and intimate story of depression while growing up, and then wanted to follow it up with concrete action to help others who grapple with the same issues. Honorable Junior Lisa, Federal MP from Barara, Chair of the Indian Community in the Parliament, and the Parliament Chair of Indigenous and Migrant of Migration Affairs. Thank you, Julian, for joining with us this afternoon. Ashish, it's an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to join with you today. I should also say that I'm the Chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Suicide Prevention, alongside my uh, just uh, recently uh, um, uh, announced his retirement, uh, Dr. Mike Kelly. So we'll have to find a, a new chair and he's been a, a wonderful partner in this space too. Right, thank you so much. And we also have Mr. Gurnam Singh, founder of Australia, India, Sports, Education and Cultural Society, shares the similar sensitive story and being a strong advocate of depression and mental health issues. So if that's okay, Julian, would you like to share your story with all of us? Uh, thanks, Ashish. And can I say how uh, wonderful it is to be here with you and with Gurnam and everyone else who's on the call today. And I know what a hugely important this issue this is. Um, I got involved in the issue of uh, mental health and suicide prevention, not through my own uh, personal experience um, being a sufferer of depression or mental illness, but it was because I told a story at the time of my maiden speech, my first speech to Parliament, about my father's death by suicide now some 24 years ago. Um, my father, uh, why did I tell this story? Um, my father was like so many men of his age. Um, uh, he, was a, he was 55. He was a, a, a quiet man. He was of that generation of, uh, of men who were told not to express their feelings. He was a reserve man. He was an accountant with the practice of Parramatta. He's very involved in communal activity wedge. Jewish. He was involved in our synagogue. He was involved, he'd been involved in our school that we went to, my brother and I. Um, uh, and really, um, we just did not pick up the signs that uh, he was contemplating suicide. So. In the week before he died, um, his behaviour started to change. And when you look back on it now, you realise exactly what was going on. So we were a family that uh, uh, always used to hug each other. And uh, you know, I'm still a, a great believer in the healing power of a hug. But uh, he, the week before he died, started to give us all these very long hugs that were quite unusual. But nobody said, oh, Dad, why are you doing this? Is everything okay? You just wasn't the sort of question you thought to ask in the mid-1990s. Um, the uh, the other thing he did that was very strange is my father was fastidious about his driving and parking. You know, uh, if you've ever seen Seinfeld, he was the sort of person who, the George Costanza approach to parking, you know, all the, very, very proud of the way he, he would park. The week before he died, he just didn't seem to care. He would park poorly and so on. There was a car hanging. It just it looked like he'd kind of thrown in the towel. And again, we didn't say anything. And the reason I spoke was to effectively say to people two things. One, there is somebody who knows what it is like to be bereaved by suicide in the parliament. So people who are going through the issue of being bereaved by suicide or who are contemplating suicide, uh, that there's somebody in the parliament that understands what that is. The second thing is to say to people that it is important that we as Australians know the signs, notice the signs, and know what to do if we see the signs that somebody might be contemplating suicide. And can I say to everybody on the call today, the key thing that you, that you should think about in terms of somebody, something happening where, with somebody where it's clear that something's up is a change in their behaviour. Now, for some people that will be like my father, you know, the long hugs, the, the uh, um, you know, giving up sort of scenario, like the, the parking that he, he just didn't seem to matter. Other people that will be, somebody who's been very disorganised, who suddenly gets fastidious about putting all their affairs in order. Um, other people will be people who 
you know, regularly turn up for an appointment at a particular place at a particular time and they just suddenly they don't show. Or somebody who changes in behaviour and routine from people that are out of the order. And it's important that we ask the question when we see that in the friends uh, and family that we know and love, um, are you okay? Or more confrontingly and perhaps more importantly, are you contemplating suicide? That's a big question to ask another person. But the advantage of asking that question is the research shows that if you're prepared to ask people that direct question, uh, um, you are more likely uh, to uh, provide the first aid which you can provide uh, if they answer yes. And that first aid is simply saying to somebody, um, let me come with you while we go to the hospital or let me sit with you while we ring one of the services like Lifeline. Um, uh, because that is the most important thing you do, to interrupt their planning, interrupt their sense of hopelessness, interrupt their sense that nobody cares about them and take them to people who know what to do um, in, these, in these situations. So the more people who can have what is known as suicide first aid, the better. The second thing I just wanted to say uh, on, on this call is obviously we're in a very strange period uh, in our life uh, in this country. Um, we've not experienced a lockdown like this, um, basically since the Second World War, some people would say not since the Spanish influenza epidemic of 1919. Um, there are many Australians um, who have lost their jobs. There are, I know I'm speaking to some people who are international students, uh, whose um, position in Australia may be precarious at this time. Um, there are many people who lost jobs that never thought they would lose jobs at all. There are people who maintain their jobs, but for whom the future is uncertain. Uh, there are people who are stuck at home with their families or their flatmates or their friends and are finding that a very difficult scenario. And there are people that just don't have a sense of, you know, when all of this is going to end. So the mental health impact of this is, is quite significant. It's, it's why, as part of the response, uh, we put aside $75 million for the increase in mental health services. I'll just give you an important fact here. One of the, the amazing things that's changed as a result of COVID-19 has been the use of telehealth. And that's telehealth from everything, both medical appointments, but also psychosocial appointments, so like psychologists and the like. There have been one million, so that number again, one million mental health, telehealth uh, appoint, uh, appointments made and executed since, uh, since that, that, that process came into place only a few weeks ago. So that's an extraordinary thing. 50% um, of all mental health consultations are now being done over telehealth, um, which, is, uh, which is amazing. Um, and I don't think that this is going to change. I think uh, telehealth is, is something that is going to be with us. Uh, and in some respects, it's a very good thing. What we are noticing, though, is despite the increased calls to helplines and the increased use of this telehealth, that actually, in some respects, it hasn't increased as much as we, as we hoped. And many people who had a pre-existing mental health issue are not going to continue are not continuing to see their doctors or continuing with their appointments and if anybody is on the line who prior to COVID-19 was seeing seeking treatment for mental health issues it is very important that you continue that treatment during this time. Um, I've said enough at the moment I, I, I know we've got some questions coming later I'll, I'll, I'll give out at some point the, uh, the, the key helpline numbers which I think is important for people to have and also provide some tips as to how you can get through this, uh, th th this difficult time. But, uh, you know, um, I would just want to thank you for putting this on, um, Gonoma and Ashish. I think this is so important, and it's so important that people have a sense of uh, that you're not alone, that um, we acknowledge as a government that, that this is a big issue, and we want to do things to ensure that the mental health of, uh, of everybody who's living here uh, is supported as much as possible. Thank you so much, Julian. Uh, now I would like uh, all the people to put their questions to the end. I'm going to respond to you one by one. So, uh, first of all, Ruben. Yes, hello. How are you doing? Hi, Ruben. Thanks for being with us. No, no worries, and thank you for your time. Um, feel free to take whatever perspective on this question that you feel most comfortable to answer from. Uh, the question is, what are the feelings or emotions in your mind that trigger you to identify when something is not right and requires action? And then what are the practical steps you take to get yourself back on track? And do you have a specific example we can learn from? 
Look, I think there's a couple of things to say. Um, these things are all about perception. You know, when you get a feel in your gut, um, uh, let me put it to best like this. It's a bit like when you're on a date and, uh, and you think, oh, uh, this is the moment I'm going to kiss the, the, the girl I'm with. You just get a set of a sec six sense. You get a sixth sense that, oh, I went to a meeting. Something's wrong with that person. It's, it's your gut instinct. If your gut instinct is telling you something's not right, listen to your gut. That's the most important thing. Um, call your, your, your family, call your friends, call one of the helplines. That's the, that, that's the most important thing that you can do. I might just go through uh, the relevant helplines. Lifeline is the most used helpline in Australia. Um, 13, 11, 14, it's the easiest number to remember, 13, 11, 14. Beyond Blue has a, has a special COVID um, uh, hotline, 1300 224 636. And if you are contemplating suicide and you can't get through, there's a suicide callback service, 1300 659 467. 1300 659 467. And they will call you back. Um, that they are sort of priority callback line. Um, room, you're a man, so men's health line as well. 1378 1978. And because this is mainly younger people, um, you can also go to Headspace, um, headspace.org.au. The other thing that the government's been saying to people, um, and our, med, our chief mental health advisor, Christine Morgan, um, has been saying there's effectively four things we can all do um, to try and keep ourselves uh, in a good position mentally. The first one is to establish a routine. Uh, the more routine you have, the more you can maintain a sense that today is um, get a, has a structure and a purpose to it, the better. Plan activities that aren't just activities that are related to your work, but make sure you give yourself a break to go down and have some exercise, watch a bit of TV, have something fun but also things that will give you a direct sense of achievement for the day. Now you can't, you know, um, say, well, I'm going to ensure that today's the day that we, we all get released and can go down to, uh, to the pub again, because that's beyond your control. Do something that will give you a sense of achievement that is beyond, that is within your control. So maybe it's finishing a chapter of a book. Maybe it's, um, you know, learning to play chess or something, but some achievement that's in your control. Make sure you do exercise. Um, that's, that, that, that's the second thing. Exercise is so important to our mental health. Uh, make sure that you're eating properly too. Um, you know, make sure you don't stop eating your fruit and vegetables and just you know, um, eat junk food or take away or a frozen meal you can heat up. There's nothing better and more important than fresh food. And finally, stay connected to your family or friends, whether they're here in Australia or around the world. Um, in our family, uh, I know we've used this opportunity to, to Zoom with people all over the world that are our friends that we don't usually get time to talk to. I um, mean, it's been lovely to do that and make sure, particularly if you've got older relatives, that you're keeping in touch with them as well. That's so important. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Julian. Thanks, Thanks Robin. Soren. Yep. Hi, how's it going? Very good indeed. Thanks for being on the call, Soren. Not at all. Uh, so my question is, what are some of the key ways to overcome anxiety during such a pandemic? Because, you know, we tend to have so many questions in our minds uh, with so much going on, unfortunately. And there are a lot of people just, you know, left with no answers and so many questions. Mm. Uh, what is your take on it? Because I've tried to sort of, I mean, I've done a decent job to kind of handle it through productivity and just staying positive. But I mean, for a larger audience out there, what would your um, suggestion or what would your two cents of that be? No. Well, firstly, can I say thank you for sharing it with us. Um, thanks for the question. Um, I understand that the level of anxiety here comes from all different um, scenarios. You know, future in Australia, future job prospects, when's this all going to end? What's happening to your family? Um, you know, am I, you know what, what's, what's the purpose of, uh, of what I'm doing at the moment? I, I'm, so I completely understand that. Um, I think that uh, um, it really is trying to break things down and having that plan for how you spend your day. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm Jewish. And one of the things that uh, it would be worthwhile, let me encourage you to do that's gone around in our community and it may well go around in, in other communities too, is to look up a video by a fellow called Natan Sharansky, N-A-T-A-N, new word, S-H-A-R-A-N-S-K-Y. Right, Natan Sharansky, COVID-19, you'll, you'll, you'll certainly get the, the video on YouTube or somewhere. 
Natan was a um, Jewish bloke that was imprisoned um, in the Soviet Union back in the days that where um, Russian communism existed, and he was imprisoned because he was a uh, he was a Jewish dissident there. He didn't recognise the power of the, and, and the uh, the Soviet government effectively. So they, they they arrested him as a political prisoner for seven years, and because he'd been arrested for seven years, he didn't know actually how long he'd be there. Um, and he left, uh, he, he got out of prison, uh, the Soviet Union collapsed, he went to Israel, he became a parliamentarian there and has devoted his life to fighting anti-Semitism. But because of the unique circumstances of uh, his life, he was asked about, well, what do you do when you're isolated um, and you don't know how long the isolation is going to be for? Uh, and he gave a couple of really good tips, which I want to share with you, which will help deal with the anxiety. The first is, um, think about tasks that you can achieve that you entirely control. So one of the things that he, he did while he was there, he, was, he learned to play chess and he learned, he learned a language. He used his time usefully. And we do have a bit more time uh, these days because we're not having to commute for things, um, because a lot of our responsibilities are not you know, meted out as they usually are. So don't waste the time, use the time productively. So what's that skill, what's that, that passion, that hobby I've always wanted to find out about? Use it. Secondly, he said, um, Realise that you're part of something that's bigger than yourself too. That's really important too. To think about the fact that there are people all over the world that are experiencing exactly what you're experiencing. There's nothing unique um, uh, that, about what you're going through and that we're all in this together. Um, uh, and thirdly, this is something he couldn't do um, uh, given he was in prison, but also you know, reaffirm that by contacting people around you um, who are part of your life, that are going through a similar experience and just share your, your, your feelings and your thoughts with them. Uh, trouble shared is trouble spared. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Sir. Next we have Andrew. Uh, hello, Mr. Lesser. Thank you very much for Hi, Andrew. Thanks for being today. with us. Thank um, you. So I deal with a lot of international students as part of the international peace group and a lot of them well, what are the practical options for them who might be suffering depression, but they might not be able to return home because there's you know, financial difficulties, but also at the same time, it's very hard for them to get employment amid this situation. So what are the practical things that they could do uh, in this situation? So a, a few things to say. Uh, there is a helpline that the government's established for international students, and let me give you that number. And that's particularly dealing with fees and enrolments and any other financial issues with relation to the course that they might be facing. So that's 1300 981 621. 1300 981 621. And that helpline's open from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Uh, at least Monday to Friday. Um, so I, I really encourage people to go there. The second thing I'd encourage people to go there. Sorry, can, can you hear that okay? I think somebody is on the line there. So let me just say that number again, 1300 981 621. The second thing I'll say is that in relation to any mental health issues that they're facing, uh, let me encourage you to uh, direct them to some of the numbers that I uh, referred to earlier, uh, numbers like Lifeline and the like, uh, uh, which are there for, for support. The third thing I'd say is that uh, we have made some changes to uh, uh, industrial laws in Australia to allow international students to do um, uh, longer hours than they're usually permitted in terms of work, particularly in relation to you know, places like supermarkets and pharmacies that, are having, that have been having issues with relation to supply uh, chain of just filling up uh, stalls and the like. So that was one of the, the first things we did back at the end of March. So there are there are some opportunities um, that are there in terms of the potential for uh, increasing uh, in, in increasing work time uh, and the like. And the final thing to say is to stay in touch with the diplomatic mission in Australia of your home country. So uh, whether that's the uh, Indian High Commission here or whether it's uh, you know, um, the Chinese um, uh, embassy or, or, or whatever, what, whatever country it may be as an international student. It's important to stay in touch with them, firstly, to find out if there are any benefits that can be uh, transmitted to you from the home country, but also uh, country, but whether also. there's a possibility of, uh, um, uh, uh, of flights and the like back there. I know, uh, uh, having dealt with in my office, many Australians who are living abroad trying to get home at the moment, 
um, being in touch with the Australian Embassy or High Commission in the relevant country is absolutely vital uh, in terms of getting people back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for your question. Next, we have Cindy from Australia. Hi, Mr. Lisa. How are you? Hi, Cindy. I'm really well. Great to talk to you. Yeah. So I think you've already touched on this um, um, question, but anyway, I'll just go ahead. Um, so one person's mental health um, or the state of mental health um, affects people around them, even um, the person's decisions. So what is a good way for keeping oneself in good mental health and also for helping others keep their own mental health in good condition as well? Well, thanks for that question, Cindy. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think I remember reading the statistic, sort of 8 million people are directly or indirectly affected by mental health issues in this country. It's a huge number. Uh, and because you're quite right, it is, isn't just the person who is um, dealing with their own mental health, it's the people around them that, uh, that are affected by it as well. And that's, an, uh, and that's important. Look, it's, it is those key things I said before, and particularly uh, at, at this time, it's having a daily routine, which is just so important. Um, plan your day. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm a parent of a two year old and uh, one of the pieces, one of the posts I'm gonna do this evening is a post from the Royal Flying Doctor Service which gives advice to parents trying to homeschool their children at home at the moment. And of course, the Royal Flying Doctor Service provides um, education to, to children uh, all over the country in remote areas of the country. So they're very used to dealing with parents having to homeschool their kids and um, structuring a routine. Set up a blackboard or a notice board that you've actually written down your routine and what you're going to achieve for the day. Uh, that's a really, really important thing to do. Uh, secondly, make sure you never go through a day without having spoken to somebody. Whether that's calling somebody up, or whether that's um, zooming, zooming them, or whether it's even just walking uh, around uh, your, your neighbourhood and so on, and you know, saying hello to people as you pass them in a, in a uh, physically distanced uh, fashion. And one of the things that our mental health um, commission has been saying, we talk a lot about social distancing. It's actually not a good term. Um, we're supposed to maintain social networking and social contact with people, but it's important that we physically distance and. Uh, uh, as you remember, the importance of physical distancing is at least a metre and a half away from people. And if you've got an in, inside uh, a scenario or a gathering scenario, you, know, you want to have a four square metre um, barrier around, um, um, uh, uh, around people. And of course, uh, in New South Wales, and I apologise to people in other states and other places, from Friday, um, we're now um, relaxing some of these things so that two people can go and visit somebody else in their home. Uh, uh, and that doesn't be, include children. So, uh, um, uh, you know, that's a, that, that is a significant restriction. So take advantage of it, do that in a sensible way. Um, eating well is also so important. Um, there's lots of studies that uh, uh, put the, uh, the health of our gut, the health of our bodies and connect it to the health of our minds. And I think, uh, um, look, you know it yourself, when you've eaten, you know, a really greasy meal when you've eaten junk food when you've had too many lollies and so on you've had too much to drink you just don't feel you don't feel that crash hot uh, so look after yourself i know there's a temptation to uh, to raid the liquor cabinet i know there's a temptation to just veg in front of netflix and uh, you know uh, eat all the things that you shouldn't really eat at, at the moment because you're home and you shouldn't go out and you don't need to go out and exercise well the truth is you do and the best thing that you can do to uh, to maintain a sense of equilibrium, a sense of balance, this good, good diet and good exercise and make them regular. Thank you so much, Thank Cindy, you. Thank for your you. question. Next, we have Abhishek all the way from Germany. Uh, is Abhishek is with us? Yes. Hi, Ashish. Hi. Good. Uh, are you able to hear me? Good tag, Abhishek. Good tag. We get as in and good. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, the gets good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So thank yeah, you, Ashish, for giving the opportunity. Thank you, sir, for explaining us all these things. I'm really pleased about it. So my question is how to overcome the fear of being judged by the people? Well, look, uh, um, uh, at least in Australia, can I say that... Uh, uh, there's no judgment uh, to admit. Yeah. Uh, 
sorry, I don't know if I, if, if I got the whole question. Was it just, what do you need to do to overcome the feel of being judged? Is that, uh, is that right or was there another part of the question? There is a part of question. I'll just enunciate his question, Julian, because I Thanks, guess Sashish. there is some connection issue with him. So I'll just repeat the question for you. Thank you. So thank you, Ashish, for being not a, Thank you, sir, for explaining us all this. So his question is, Julian, just give me a sec, yeah. In today's era, youth have many possibilities to change their life pattern courses and life partners freely, but why it's so hard to open the mind to near and dear ones, how to overcome from being judged and depressed about what other think? Well, look, uh, can I say, uh, thank you for that very difficult question, um, an important question. But look, in Australia, at least, I can say that people, uh, that there's no reason why anybody should be judged. Um, for admitting that they have a mental health uh, issue. Um, you've had Australians from all walks of life, very high profile Australians uh, talking about these issues. And I think back to the days where my father um, died, um, you know, that's 25 years ago almost. Um, people just didn't talk about these issues. They got swept under the carpet. And indeed the thinking at the time was, you shouldn't talk about these issues. Uh, we've had a complete revolution uh, in, the, in this area where it's becoming more acceptable to talk about mental health, where it's becoming more acceptable to talk about these issues. Uh, and I think it is really important that people are prepared to, uh, uh, to, to, to say, look, I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing so well. Now that's difficult for the person um, who, is, who has the mental health issue, but there's something that all the rest of us can do. And it's really important that the rest of us can do it. And that is that we, we take the time to listen carefully, compassionately, and in a non-judgmental fashion uh, to people who've got a mental health issue. Having a mental health issue is no different to having a, a physical health issue. You wouldn't look at somebody strangely just because they'd broken their leg or uh, injured their arm and were in a cast. Um, you know, there's no difference um, in relation to uh, mental health issues. And I think it's really important that we as a society and as a community um, uh, adopt that particular approach. Otherwise, it will be more difficult for people to, uh, to, to come forward. Can I say something in the Australian context that as I'm speaking to a, a diverse audience, let me say this that concerns me is that most of the people who come to talk to me about mental health and suicide prevention tend to be from what I would describe as a sort of Anglo-Australian community. I don't see many people who come from diverse community backgrounds coming to talk to me about these issues. And that really concerns me. And it concerns me because I assume that in many communities uh, within our country uh, that there is still a stigma associated to admitting that you've got a mental health issue and there's a stigma associated to dealing with mental health issues. Every community has these things. If there's a human condition uh, to, 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 have, to be troubled, and we've, we've had this uh, since the dawn of time, tough uh, i'm i'm struggling i need help and that that's viewed in a non-judgmental fashion uh julian i just want to add on one thing the fear thing you have mentioned because as you mentioned there is a lot of other community and other um ethnic group they have mental issue and all that the problem is everyone have for something day to day just for some for a work some from home somewhere from relationship or anything but the problem is uh, when they come out, how they come out, how they actually discuss, there is no one person they can trust. That's a big issue. If you share something with someone is your personal thing, that actually get revealed. And that's a scared lot of young people have at the moment that they don't want to come up and speak someone regarding now everyone is in financial hardship. They are very, very in financial hardship, but they don't understand if they won't speak they will not get the resolution. So we always trying that if you speak, you have to trust somehow, somewhere mm. to someone to believe that that person can guide you. And I'm, I'm so happy that you accepted our request that you should talk to on this because coming from you, it means a lot, not only for us, because that also reveal as a leadership, like it's coming from you, it looks more important and actually a correct information. So how do you think what people need to come up that they should be uh, not being judged 
that if someone i say that julian i have a problem i don't work anymore uh, can you help me so that is not making any difference but you air to help how people will come up with this um well can i i'm here for for two reasons. Well, I'm really passionate about this issue, but two, I've got very great regard for you and for Ashish. And so uh, thank you for your, your work in, uh, in putting this, uh, this Zoom together. Um, look, I think there's two things to say. Firstly, the professional services are there to help us in a non-judgmental manner. They're not for one sector of the community, they're for everyone. So if you've got a problem and you need to talk about it, talk, call one of the numbers I mentioned beforehand. Uh, and uh, look, I'm, I'm happy to shoot those numbers through to you so you can distribute them in case people weren't able to take them down properly. The second thing to say is all of us have someone in our life. Um, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's somebody that we work with, maybe it's somebody that we, that we went to school with, who is the person that um, we trust as a friend. Um, there's, there's somebody that we, that we would tell intimate secrets to. Um, uh, they're the person that I describe as your 3 a.m. in the morning call. We all know that we have some, think about in your own life, who is the person that you would call at 3 a.m. in the morning if you broke down in your car and you needed a hand? Who wouldn't judge you for doing that and who would come to your, to your aid? And I think you should think as well about who, am, who can I be that person for too? And in the next week, have a think about that. And call the person that you want to be the 3 a.m. in the morning person for and say, look, I just, I've just i been thinking about my life and I've been thinking about our friendship and I want you to know you can always call me if you ever have any need, whether it's a physical uh, issue, a, a financial issue, a mental health issue, and you just want to talk about it, I want to be that person for you. But you should also think about who is the person that you would like to go to and give them a call and say to them, you know, I've been thinking about myself I, I regard our friendship so greatly that you're the person I'd like to go to for that 3 a.m. call. And people, I've had that call, um, I've had that discussion with a very good friend of mine um, uh, uh, and uh, we know where each other's 3 a.m. call. So when the call goes and it's he, he that calls, I know, um, you know, it's serious and he knows the same with me. Thank you, Julian. And I know it's almost three and you have to go. So if you agree, we will go for another two more questions left. So is that okay? If we could do one more question, because I really do need to go. I'm on a, I'm so we'll on a have answer. a quick question from Sunidhi, joining us from Macquarie University. Uh, hi. My question is, what are the most common ways to deal with a person who is in depression? Well, thank you, Sunidhi, for that question. And uh, it's terrific to hear that you're at Macquarie University just outside my electorate. Um, Sunidhi, uh, look, there are a whole range of uh, ways of dealing with people who, are, who have depression because there's a whole range of um, uh, uh, where you are on, on the depression spectrum. Um, uh, there are people who've got very mild depression. Many Australians will have a very mild depression at some point in their lives through to people for whom the depression is very severe. Uh, some of those at the severe end obviously require things like medication and hospitalisation. Uh, at the other end, uh, it's uh, people who, who uh, um, get a mental health plan from their GP uh, and involve some, some counselling. So there is not a one size fits all. Um, you know, as an initial uh, issue, uh, uh, you should uh, have a discussion uh, with your GP uh, or have a discussion, uh, uh, or if, if that's too confronting, go and call one of those helplines that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and have a bit of a discussion with them about what to, uh, about what you might do. Thank you so Thank much. You. Sunidhi is a mental health student at Macquarie, by the way. So she. Oh, fantastic! Yes. And Macquarie is a particularly good institute in relation to uh, uh, to mental health that I visited some yeah. years ago, and it was one of the best best ones that I've been to actually. Can we take last question? Is already three. Uh, no, just okay. Last. Very, very, very quick. Yeah, yeah. But one quick fa question. Fa 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, I know that you will be quite busy, so thank you. Um, my question is, you touched on it briefly. So actually, um, at this time of uncertainty, uh, where not only all, all like youth, but also all sectors of the community are affected. So how is the government actually preparing for an increase in the member of uh, the number of people who have psychological stress and mental health issues, as it is already? Um, so studies have sh uh, show that there's over 75% mental health issues uh, development before the age of 25. 
and also where does mental health issues and management come in the agenda when the focus of is more on employment businesses and also economy well look thank you very much for that question very briefly government's invested 75 million extra dollars in relation to uh, the, uh, the the covid-19 mental health response that includes um, money to establish a specific uh, COVID-19 line within the context of Beyond Blue, additional funding to Lifeline and Kids Helpline. It also um, you know, relates to the, uh, uh, the absolute revolution that is telehealth. Um, uh, you know, I think prior to um, uh, COVID-19, there was a real distinction between um, getting psych psychiatric and psych uh, social support, so seeing a psychiatrist versus seeing a psychologist. That distinction has largely been abolished as a result of uh, um, the access to telehealth in terms of uh, my understanding of the Medicare treatment of those services. So that's been a, a major revolution. Look, we do understand that there are real mental health challenges in relation to dealing with COVID-19, that in that it is a, a massive challenge of a scale that we've, we've not experienced in our lifetimes. Um, but uh, uh, we do have a plan uh, to get through it, and that involves increased support services um, uh, for, for our community. Awesome. Thank, you, Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julian, for taking out the time to speak about the issue. We know you are filled with a lot of work on your table, uh, but I would uh, say, and I would commend you for, uh, for coming up. I think uh, it's a forming moment uh, in the history. I would recommend you all to hear to uh, Julian's maiden speech. I have heard it more than 10, 10 times in my life so far. Uh, uh, thank you again, Julian. We need Thank you, Julian. Like thank you. you for your time. And say hello to James. I yeah. shall do. <laughs> thanks, Gunnar. And thanks, thank Association. You. Thank you, everyone. We can't imagine a better champion than you, Julian. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, Julian. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, thank for joining you. with us. Thank you. And uh, I think, uh, first of all, last question we have, Actually, we can hear from Navneet. We all are here. Navneet, what is your question? Sorry, <laughs> Julian is not here, but I think someone else can answer this question because we have heard a lot. So Navneet, what, what was your question? That's okay. Um, I wanted to ask that. He said that a lot of people of color don't approach him about mental health issues, people from different communities. But I feel in my personal experience that they look for someone from their own community uh, because they feel like they would understand them better. So I wanted to ask what, what, what is Australian uh, mental health sector doing about diverse communities and linguistically diverse people, people who can't speak English as well and can't express themselves? I but, think Julian, yeah. Julian maybe mentioned a few helpline, uh, like Sue said, Suicide, Lifeline, uh, Beyond Blue, and is all the number. And I think there is a, also a telecommunication side that interpreter that can talk to in different language. So maybe that the government perspective, we can help them and educate them. And soon, maybe I think this topic is very big after coming up a lot of questions. We have decided that we should put on our website the mental health helpline to it to help in all different community. And anyone else, if uh, you want to answer anything, you can go for it. I would just suggest you, Navneet, that there are ample number of universities like Macquarie, Western Sydney, and so many other universities who have very uh, uh, good medical uh, you know, health systems, and it charge nothing like they charge uh, 10 bucks for yeah, one. They provide so much help to the students. and. Uh, students like Sunidhi who, who are actually being trained, uh, uh, you know, to help people in every way. So yes, Australia is trying uh, uh, best for uh, for the multicultural people across the spectrum. Right. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Ritpal. And we just want to uh, sing a song for Ruben because it's his birthday. <laughs> Make his day better. So one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I never thought I'd be on a Zoom call having happy birthday sung to me today. So <laughs> thank you very much. That was great. It's always good when you don't think about something and something happened. And maybe 
uh, in, in Sydney it's raining. I don't know the weather in Melbourne, but I, I know you're locked down. You might have a couple of beers. And cheers to yourself and the family. Yeah, thank you very much. The housemates are pretty good beers. So I was... believe a heart, heartfelt thank you to Reed Pal. He is not keeping well and still uh, he supported us in IT and everything. So oh. heartfelt thank you to Reed Pal. Thanks, Reed. Thank you, guys. Reed, you want to say anything? <laughs> no, I think, I think the session was really good. Uh, probably got a lot of stuff. Thank you, Reed, yeah. for multitasking for us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and uh, we're looking forward to yeah. seeing you, everyone. And thank you, Andrew, for all your support. Last minute. No worries. Bye-bye, guys. Pleasure.